Somebody asked me to describe my running style. And I was just like, man, I, I run angry. It's very hard for me to just go down to the ground. You know, it's not gonna just easily take one person to bring me down. It's gonna, it's gonna take more than one. I don't wanna go back to where I was at. That's what makes me grind so hard and do all I do now. That's what makes me run angry. One of the first memories I had was telling my dad that I'm gonna play for LSU one day. He did everything for them and with them. They didn't want for nothing. Like, he made sure they had everything. The first game system, a trampoline. One night, we were just playing in the kitchen. I'm five. My dad's 28 years old. I picked him up. He was just like, hey, man, you strong. And I was like, yeah, you know, and I can run fast. And he was like, man, you're going to be the football man in the house. One of his friends that was with him came knocking on the door and told me what had happened. So I wasn't prepared for it. I didn't expect it. I wasn't ready. This guy walks in with his girl. They got into an argument. Then they started fighting. My dad knocks him out, and he felt played in front of his girlfriend and pulled the gun out in the restaurant and shot him 17 times. I remember coming home from leaving the scene, and I walked through the house. They were still asleep, and I just broke down again because I'm like, how am I going to tell my kids that their father was killed? I'm looking at the news and I see part of my dad's body. I'm at five, six, you don't know what the hell going on. When he passed, I had to get them some shoes for the funeral. And I went to the mall and I broke down in the mall because I had to call his father's sister. And I'm like, you know, I don't even know what size shoes they wear because he took care of them. Like he brought all their clothes, shoes, you know, he did it. That goes to show you like how close they were. The bond was unbreakable. I remember like trying to jump in his casket at the funeral. In my mind, like I'm like, what is this? Why is he why is he leaving? Like it just didn't really hit me until like a week later when like when I see he really wasn't around. I still not strong about it myself. It's not something like we'll always talk about. You know, he remembered that his dad always saying he was gonna be the football player and he was gonna make it. When he makes his first touchdown, he was gonna run down the field with him. So the year after my dad passed, I started playing football. And when I started playing football, I was so angry at everything. I wanted to show everybody not to mess with me. Walking outside my house, you know, you look left, you got people getting jumped, you, you see guns, you know, you look right, you see opportunity. It's just so many obstacles you run into growing up where we come from. You wake up and your mama already going for work, the house empty. You look in the fridge and it's not much. You be like, man, we hungry, man. You start looking for food. Throughout the day, we be starving. We'll take turns going in the store stealing food. The thing that makes it hard is poverty. Poverty changes everything. Like, when you don't have money, that brings gangs, that brings violence. I always went out the house and walked right, because that was the route for my football field. I stayed there all day, because that was my happy place, where I always wanted to be at. I never wanted to be at home. I never felt safe there. It's not so much that a kid wakes up and I want to join a gang. Nobody ever do that. It's just every day growing up knowing that my mama hungry, I'm hungry, and they got such and such down the street that I can go sell tonight and I can get that $200. It's not so much that it's being pushed in our face. It's just it's around us. You're living in it. Sports is what kept us together. Sports is why we're still a group. My transition from South Baton Rouge to, to Catholic High School was, was very difficult. You know, me, Travell, and Javon, we were all supposed to be at McKinley. I went to McKinley. I wasn't really fond of McKinley. And I just figured that a different environment, you know, he can really accomplish his dreams. The hardest thing about going from an all-black society to a completely all-white society, being around people you were never exposed to growing up. When you look around, we come from predominantly black areas. We come from poverty. Difference always hard. He was really upset, like he came crying, saying he didn't want to go there anymore. And he's telling me that the kid's teasing him and he's having a hard time. You know, at Catholic, my mom didn't want me to get put out. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to have to be the one to call my mom, telling her, hey, you got to pick me up, I just got put out. That, that was the last thing I wanted. You know, you really had to sacrifice a lot, you know, that you weren't used to. Just hearing, you know, different things like, oh, you poor, you don't have money. Oh, you just here for football. Hey, you dumb. You probably got all else. Us asking other people to buy us food and stuff. It was really embarrassing at the time. And I told him, I said, Darius, look, those kids are no better than you. You can do whatever you want as long as you put your mind to it. And as long as your mind to it and you focus on that, you can achieve whatever. I mean, nobody's better than you. When I met Stephanie, I was a junior in high school. She was the junior counselor. It took me a while to open up. 
because I never really just got into my background with anybody. With his friends coming in and himself, they were a little lost. We'll see the houses they living in and stuff, and just like, what do your parents do? Like, how do y'all do this? Just being around them, you know, seeing how they really never had to want for anything. I just saw a really frail child that just needed help at that time. I could tell even not just Darius, but Travell and, you know, the rest of his friends there that they just needed someone, a voice for them. She invited me over to eat dinner with her husband and her two kids, you know, a place to sleep if I wanted to sleep out there. It felt good. It felt like something I, I needed, you know, just that extra comfort and extra home. It takes a village to raise a child, and we were just very happy to be part of that village. When Darius moved in with us, he would actually take pictures of the refrigerator because he's never seen a refrigerator have so much food in it before. And I just really couldn't stay away. Even when she didn't invite me, I asked her if I can come over and sleep. Or do y'all have food, can I come eat? I just ended up moving in. It was against the rules at Catholic, so she had to resign or she was gonna get fired if she kept helping me. So she resigned. To this day, you know, I'm just very grateful. When he was a kid, it was about survival, and it was hard for him. He didn't have time to be a kid. And now he's kind of on a development scale where he can let that kid part come out. So many people look up to him because he's an example for the youth. He's an example for, for me. Whenever he's running, he feels his dad there. I see this fun, loving child that just likes to keep moving, moving. He's the reason why I really smile every day. After I get off the podium, you know, crying tears of joy. And when training camp starts, it's back to run angry. And y'all better be ready. <laughs>